Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to the shop. If you haven't been here before, uh, I, every now and then I try to get something done. That's my shop. Um, so I've been working on some boxes uh, and uh, they're cherry. Nine drawers. They're fun. Little drawers. People like that. Uh, I don't mind. And uh, I've, I've got these things knocked along. I've got one coat of shellac on these things and I've sanded them so they're nice and smooth. I'm real happy with that. Uh, and ready for a second coat of shellac. I'm going to do drawers next, which is what the topic of today is. I've been working on reducing large piles of pieces of wood into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. And so now we've got these things over here. Let me show you. So here, a little pile on the bench of uh, drawer faces and they're all numbered so that when they're if everything goes right and I get everything done right they'll all go back together and they will go back in the cabinet and when they do they'll line back up into the boards that they once were they're all cut sequentially out of each board and each one of them is numbered so that they'll all go back together if I've got them in the right orientation I haven't screwed something up anyway Big drawers, medium-sized drawers, little drawers, uh, and I've got them rabbited and plowed, uh, and then I've got backs for all of them, little backs, medium-sized backs, long backs, you can see the sequence here, uh, and I've got sides, piles and piles and piles of sides. The thing that's attractive about this is all the sides are the same, right? So we don't mind that, uh, and they are all identical. There's not one micrometer of difference uh, between one and the next. At least that's what my hope is. So I'm now going to try doing the assembly. I've got some drawer bottoms, and I'm going to chop them up individually and fit them and then put some together, and you're going to be able to watch. Can't wait. I know. I know you just can't wait. Uh, I sort of spent my, my life, my career doing uh, you know field work working on people's houses old houses dead people's houses um, and and you know when you're doing field work site work you, every piece is unique because I typically work in old houses uh, that have changed over time so every piece is always unique you had the assumptions that you made and then you on site made accommodations well, the dream is here in the shop shop work is different uh, you look for similarities between pieces so that you can make put them into groups and so clearly a similarity is the drawer bottoms all of the drawer bottoms on this set of drawers are the same that's six boxes six drawer bottoms all exactly the same so I've got stop set up and the stock is already ripped and three sixteenths of an inch thick and sanded and here we go And I need a couple of these, so why not get it done? Um, I've already made three of them warming up for this because I wanted you to see it go without any gravest errors or great mistakes. So you get the benefit of having to not sit through all of them. But we're going to wash these three. So I've got three bottoms. I'm going to go over here to my station I've set up over here to thin the edges down. I'll show you. I'll probably turn this off. So here's the drill. Um, I grabbed a drawer back. It has a plow in it. It's a, approximately an eighth of an inch wide, approximately a quarter of an inch up. And this is approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. It's all pretty close. So this will fit in there if things go right. doesn't fit now because it's too thick. And when it does go in, it'll be a little bit above the bottom so it won't scrape on the bottom of the case. So next trick is to make this edge thin enough to go in this box. I mean to go in that plow in the back. Here we go. I've got a little block plane. some sort of a bevel, right? Just 
jam. Yeah, that's too tight. I don't really want these things that tight. Another pass, maybe two. Line up with the edge. There we go. That should that should do it. Oh yeah, nice. Do the other side. Check. Mm, too snug. Eventually, I'll have done this enough times that I'll be able to do it in my sleep. And there you go. That fits really nicely. Now all I have to do, things being equal, is connect the bevel on this side to the bevel on that side. You'll see two little, if things go right, you'll see a little miter will show up there and there. And when that does, and I've got it straight, it'll fit. Going across the grain like this, I want to give the plane a little bit of an angle so it does a little shearing action and makes it clean enough that I don't have to sand it. That's just another step. See that miter? And this one right here is not quite to the corner. And just for the heck of it, we'll test it. Oh yeah, nice. Do that again. miter line. Looks pretty good. Nice. All right, now let's move over to the assembly area. Okay, so this is the back part of the drawer assembly area. You'll see why in a second. I mean, it's not the mystery. It's, it's about using the nail gun. I've got a little nail gun I'm, I've got set up with three quarter inch long brads which are pretty good size for whacking into these pieces of wood. The drawer sides are about a quarter inch, so three quarter gives me a half inch of penetration. But that's a half of an inch of trouble that that nail could uh, get into, so to speak. So I want to be careful as to how I shoot that nail. And I can't just depend for the hundreds of nails that I'm going to shoot. I can't depend on my aim. So I've made this little jig that holds this, in this case, the gun parallel to the, uh, to the back. So the nails go in perfectly. And the glue sort of holds the pieces in place until they drop. And then I pick them up. still have enough glue on there. That's good. So I'm kind of depending on the glue to do the ultimate holding together. And depending on the nails to do the clamping while the glue is setting. All right, so that's in. That's done. Now I got a little bit of ooze on the inside. I'm going to cut that away with a chisel right now. I won't bother it ever again. I get, I'm getting a little bit of glue squeezing out the back on the back of this thing, but I waxed this all ahead of time, so that bit of glue will scrape right off and I'll be able to continue to use this for the 90 drawers that I need to make. Okay, so that's done. Now let's slide in the back, slide in the bottom, sorry, which we've already determined fits. There you go. Nicely done. Now <coughs> a little bit of glue. This one's a little bit different. I've got the end grain here. And then this has got, this isn't just a butt joint like the back. This is a full cornered rabbit. Okay. Uh, like a lot of people, I'm always concerned with the end grain of the pieces of wood soaking up the glue and starving the joint. So, we have a tendency to, even on something as small as this, get in and rub the glue a little bit into the joint just to, 
just to sort of fill the end grain a little bit more. Okay, so here we go, moment of truth. Down it goes, a little bit of glue, that's good. That's good. Now, jump. Excuse me for a second. All right. So. Okay, now I've got the face. And I'm going to, I've got a different sort of setup. I want the nail angled down on this side. So. So a little teeny bit of glue comes out there. That's great. This is good. All snug. Nails set. Pretty nice. Didn't dent things up too badly. Drawer. You know, moved along. You've got a little dislocation there. I'll clean that up. A little bit of dislocation there. I'll clean that up. A couple of passes of some planes after the glue is dried. So here we are little drawer my cherry face this is drawer number from box four this is drawer number eight and uh, my pine bottom my spalted maple sides and back it's gonna be beautiful do another one Yeah, a little snug. A little snug. You can feel it when it goes in. All right. So. Shoot the back.
came out really well. I got a little teeny bit of glue ooze on the inside and clean out just by passing a chisel across it. That looks great. Love it when it works. All right. Front. All right, um, you probably noticed that I've uh, basically removed the safety to, uh, on the nail gun. I'll back up just a little bit. It's not that I don't want to be safe. I just don't like the plunger. It's hard to fight it. So I'm working this without a safety on it. Work, you know, without a net, right? Hopefully I don't get into trouble. Right. That's terrific. So another one done. One more and I'll have at least these done. Be great. See you in a bit.